Everyone knows The Simpsons started off as little shorts on the Tracy Ullman show for three seasons before they were eventually spun off into their own half-hour show. All of them were written by Matt Groening, animated at Klasky Schuspel by a team of members consisting of David Silverman, Wes Archer, and Bill Kopp, and featured the cast members from the show, Dan Castellano and Julie Kavner. And um, in the beginning, the drawings appeared very crude because the animators were more or less just tracing over graining storyboards. But as the series developed, so did the designs and layouts of the characters and the Simpsons drawing style was ultimately conceived. So why am I bringing this up today? Well, it's important to talk about the history of the show and how it got started by Tracy Ullman, who has a guest role in the episode we're about to talk about here. Bart's Dog Gets an F, originally broadcast on March 7, 1991, written by John Vitti and directed by Jim Reardon. In the episode, Homer becomes fed up with Santa's little helper who continually destroys things. He says he will get rid of him unless he goes to an obedience school. Santa's little helper does poorly there, and Bart is unwilling to use a choke chain. The night before the final exam, Bart and Santa's little helper play on Lisa's suggestion that this will be their last hours together. This bonding breaks down the communications barrier, meaning that Santa's little helper can now understand Bart's commands, thus passing obedience school. Now, this is the only time that Tracy Ullman has guest starred in the series, which may sound surprising at first, considering her show was the reason why The Simpsons came to be. But then again, it takes us back to the interesting history of what happened, because there is an interesting story about what happened. You see, in 1992, a year after her guest spot, Ullman filed a lawsuit with 20th Century Fox in L.A. over profits from the later half-hour incarnation of The Simpsons. She wanted a share of The Simpsons' merchandising and gross profits, believing she was entitled to $2.5 million of the estimated $50 million Fox made in 1992. The Fox network had paid her $58,000 in royalties for The Simpsons, as well as $3 million for the three and a half seasons her show was on the air. As Ullman had continued her professional career with former producer James L. Brooks, only the studio and not Brooks were named in the suit. Brooks was allowed to videotape his testimony as he was in the middle of filming I'll Do Anything, in which Ullman appeared. Ev- evidently, eventually, the co- courts ruled in favor of the network. So basically, Ullman didn't win, but at least it didn't get too messy because she kept a relationship with Brooks after the lawsuit. Plus, it didn't prevent her from showing up in other Fox shows. Like, you know, she made appearances on Fox produced shows like Alan McBeal and How I Met Your Mother. So enough about the history lesson. Let's talk about the episode itself. And honestly... I wasn't a big fan of this one. There really isn't a lot about this one that's anything too special or great that does kind of make it a classic. I mean, I don't know. Because out of me, because me personally, out of all the characters in The Simpsons that they do episodes of, Santa's Little Helper ones are usually the weakest ones. They're, they're usually the ones that are not the best ones. The only real one I even really remotely liked was Two Dozens and One Greyhounds. But even then, that one still has a lot of problems on its own. This is just okay, with a decent bit of comedy and a plot very similar to Bart Gets an F, hence why the title of the episode is called Bart's Dog Gets an F. In fact, the episode is pretty much Bart Gets an F, except with Santa's little helper in the role of Bart, and sometimes the comedy can be very good too, more of a precursor to what's to come in the later episodes with great references to Predator, Jaws, E.T., Animal House, and then you get those little moments here and there, those little moments that should not be really that great, but... They do lead to some funny moments. I mean, this one in particular really gets me every time. Maybe it's just because the frisbee just hits him and the dog doesn't even doesn't even have a, a single reaction to it whatsoever. I don't know. That gets me every time I see it. But, of course, the ending in the highlight is that Bart and Santa's little helper have trouble passing the obedience class. And the rest of the episode plays out what you think it's going to be like. It'll be their last few hours together. Their bonding of just playing works, and now Santa's little helper can understand Bart's commands, and as I said, they pass the class. It does feel very realistic how, you know, like how most animals get with their, get along with their humans. Sometimes it t- t- takes doing the simplest of things like playing or walking or feeding an animal to make the animal a better pet. And the episode does a good job of making it seem like this could happen in real life and not reducing it to just d- d- down to just being because it's what the audience expects, you know. You know, Tracy Ullman does a good job in the episode, too, but she's really not given a whole lot to do, per se. And she's the main guest star of the episode next to Frank Welker, Santa's little helper. She only appears about maybe half the episode. Compare that to Where Brother War, Oh Brother War, that where Danny DeVito shows up for half the episode, about 15 minutes worth. But hey, guest stars nowadays are, only get about one or two lines per episode. There's been a couple of episodes where John Lovitz reprised a character from the past um, in the last couple of years, in the last decade, where he only shows up for a little bit, and so... You kind of take what you have to get with this. But, um, overall, 
this is a decent episode, but then again, nothing about it really truly stands out or makes it a must-see episode. It's got some decent moments here and there. The guest voice work, I think, is good enough, but the main problem with the episode is that it just doesn't really have anything new or noteworthy to do about it to make it a must-see. And like I said, these are usually the weaker episodes of the show when it's focused on Santa's little helper. Um, not one of the best, but not one of the worst either. Kind of split down the middle. Let it pass. Let it pass.